Welcome to The Word Made Flesh. This is our weekly review of the upcoming Sunday, the Word of God, and how to incorporate it into our daily lives. Jonathan, how are you doing? Good. We've got a big feast coming up this week. We do. It's exciting. The Feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you know anything about that feast, Jonathan? It started, was it the 13th century? I think somewhere back there, yeah. Somewhere in the 1200s. Exactly. I always have to remind myself, 13th means it's the 1200s. Exactly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there are some Eucharistic miracles that were happening. Um, the Holy Father was on vacation. It was the summer, I'm not sure. He was hanging out in the mountain region of Orvieto and Bolzena. A priest was traveling from the Germanic regions through the area, celebrating Mass in the small village of Bolzena. Uh, and the story goes that he was filled with doubt as he was celebrating the Mass and as he was consecrating the host and wondering how the body and blood of the Lord could really be present in bread and wine. And as he lifted up the host for adoration, uh, it began to bleed upon the corporal, the cloth that's on the altar. And that uh, Eucharistic miracle was taken immediately over to the neighboring village where the Pope was. Uh, and it spurred this great feast that he declared that we must have a feast in honor of the body and blood of the Lord because it seems that there is doubt in the faith and the hearts of the people. Yeah, I think and, and throughout the world, a lot of times it's celebrated Thursday. Correct. So the feast's proper day is on the Thursday following Trinity Sunday. Mm -hmm. And if it cannot be celebrated on Thursday, the, the bishop's conference can move it to the following Sunday so that more people can partake of it. Right. And so that's what's happened in the United States. Thursday, of course, being the day of the Last Supper. Right. And so that's why Corpus Christi was established on the Thursday following Trinity Sunday. Uh, but then in the United States, the bishops want more people to partake of that feast. And so we've moved it to this coming Sunday. Nice. And I think I read somewhere, you can correct me if I'm wrong or you might not know about it, it's one of the five days that bishops are supposed to be in their diocese in the during the year. There are yeah, there are several days where like the the church's law says you should be in your cathedral doing your mass with your people because it is such an important day. Yeah, so I, I just thought that was cool looking at looking it up and seeing what we could find on it. So yeah, yeah. so this is the second Sunday now into ordinary time. But these first two in the Summer Ordinary Time series are these feasts that wrap up the Easter mysteries. Trinity Sunday last week, and now this coming week, Body and Blood of the Lord. Yeah. Let's dive into the readings that we're going to find this week, Jonathan. Our first reading, I think, comes from Exodus. Yep, we're talking about Moses. Moses is doing some stuff. He received the law and gave it to the people. Yep, and then now he is kind of doing a purification rite or something. You know, it's a... Taking the sacrifice, he's sprinkling blood on the altar, over the people. Exactly. So as you hear this reading, you see Moses doing a very priestly thing, that he calls forth the first Levitical priests, and he purifies them. He establishes the altar. He uh, uses then the blood of sacrifice to purify that. So the pouring out of, of blood, that pouring out of life blood is that, that image of, of sacrifice and purification. And so that first reading, it sounds a little, hmm. A little uh, bit of foreshadowing. It's a little bit of a foreshadow because we're going to think ahead to what Christ himself is going to do. As Moses purifies the people, he sprinkles the blood over them uh, and, and exercises that first priesthood. Which takes us to our psalm. Yes. The response always to the word of God and this psalm, the response is going to be, I shall take the cup of the Lord and, and offer it to him, to give thanks to him. So you're going to hear all of this imagery through the song, like, how can I make a return to the Lord? I know, I will lift up the chalice and give thanks to the Lord. Uh, it, it's, again, a great priestly prayer. Uh, it's, it's one that I had inscribed on the back of the holy card for my own ordination, that psalm, because, like, how can I thank the Lord? I will just lift up the cup of salvation and offer my hymn of praise. That's really cool. So as we're giving our, as we're responding to this reading, this, this, 
this priestly prayer of priestly act of Moses, uh, we really ought to respond with, well, what am I going to do now? Right. So that's going to be on our hearts in this coming Sunday. Right. Let's take us to the second reading. Second reading is all from Hebrews, I believe. That whole reading is, uh, is descriptive of how we have this great high priest. And what does he do? He enters into the true tabernacle right. and offers the true sacrifice. That's what it talks again, once again, how it's a pure sacrifice. And it's the, you know, they references the prior sacrifices. Absolutely. And then, the ones that Moses were doing. Right. And then now the new eternal sacrifice that we don't, it, there's nothing beyond it. Because Jesus, as we know, is the true sacrifice. He completed it. So as we, as we enter into this, the, these readings, we, we think about everything that God had done in the past. And he is preparing his people for salvation. He wants to purify us. Mm -hmm. And so Moses becomes the sign of that purification. We join in by giving our thanks and, and participating however we can. And we see that all fulfilled in what Jesus did on the cross. On the cross, he sprinkled his blood over the world, over us, and, and offered us that purification. Yeah. But we can't participate in that without some link that joins today to then. Right. Because that, that event happened on Mount Calvary about 2,000 years ago. How do we connect that? Well, the gospel makes that clear. Yeah. Where do we find ourselves in the gospel? So it's the gospel of Mark, and Jesus sends out his apostles. Go to town, talk to the man, and uh, say, we need to prepare for the Passover. Ah, we're last suppering. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. And so they go prepare, and then it, we kind of skip over a lot of the Last Supper, and it goes straight into when Jesus took the bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples. You know the rest. <laughs> Do this in memory of me, that this is the moment. So again, what Jesus is doing is he's setting the stage for his sacrifice on the cross, and he's giving us a way to participate in that. So you and I, when we gather to celebrate the Lord's Supper, the Holy Eucharist, we are entering into the salvation of Jesus Christ. We're entering into that, that moment of purification. Yeah, and it's not, it's not usually this cut and dry, easy to see how all of the readings in the psalm kind of relate to each other. But this weekend is a great weekend for the show to start because they are very clearly they set each other up and they're all intertwined and it's really beautiful where it's not just some random happening but Absolutely. everything that it, everything that goes on is because of what happened with moses and it's the fulfillment of like you said it's the completion we see the whole story from front to, to end so that kicks us off then into our own lives where do we go from here so we, we call this little weekly reflection, the word made flesh, because we are taking the word of God in the, in the midst of this celebration on Sunday. And we will, yes, we will enflesh it in Holy Communion in the Eucharist at Mass. But then as we receive word and sacrament, how do we enflesh that in our lives going forward? Mm -hmm. And so a couple of the reflection questions that I've been thinking about are, particularly through last year's quarantine and shutdown and lockdown and pandemic. And really that question of when we were deprived of the Holy Eucharist for such a long time, for, for six to seven weeks, and then for some people a year because they were not out in public yet. Right. Uh, what, what is our experience? What was your experience of being deprived of that sacramental communion, of, of coming into contact with the body and blood of Christ. Do you have any thoughts on that, Jonathan? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was a little painful. It's, you know, it's... But it did help me not take it for granted. Mm. Um, oftentimes I say that I'm kind of, not jealous, but envious, same thing, of, of converts because they choose to become Catholic and then there's that preparation time when they cannot receive the Eucharist. And it all culminates on the Easter Vigil where this huge celebration and then they finally get to receive this thing yeah. that they've been waiting for. Um, so it's kind of a glimpse of that because it's all my life, as much as I can remember, if I go to Mass, I can go and receive. Right. And it's not really... Don't get me taken for granted. And it's something that... It's a big deal. It is a big <laughs> it deal. It is a really big deal. And, 
as you can see through the readings this weekend, that it is just something that it's the greatest gift that God gave us to be in communion Truly. with him, um, where he wants to physically, spiritually enter into us. And there's nothing more intimate than that. And there's nothing greater than that. And so just being able to conceptualize that and take it to heart is something that, that really, that de- de- being deprived of that really, really helped me do. So Absolutely. And now that we are receiving in person, many of us, most of us, uh, this becomes uh, a time now to really prepare yourself for this upcoming feast, mm-hmm. uh, to, to make a good confession if, if you need to do that so that there is a place in your heart to receive the Lord and then to really enter into that celebration, uh, lift up the chalice with me in the celebration of that Mass and come forward to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the feast that we celebrate this weekend, but a feast that we are privileged to celebrate every day of our lives. Yeah. God bless. See you Sunday.